Oh, it's live. <laughs> Hi, everybody. This is Karen Newman, and this is the Hukolo weekly uh, class, the Friday class. And today we're going to do an intro to remote viewing. Uh, my name is Karen Newman, and I'm going to be co-hosting this class with uh, Max Rumpel, and we are going to be teaching the class together. Um, in the room, we have Christine, Eva, and James. They're joining us. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hey. Hey. So, um, Max, why don't you uh, take over? <laughs> I Oh, okay. So, Christine has actually came up with a class. And I, um, I would like to ask the participants just a couple of words. What's your experience with rem remote viewing? I can say that I've tried, but I haven't gotten very far. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I tell the story. Um, I, I tell one story that I use special um, mind machine, which was synchronizing the sound, the, mm -hmm. the vision. And there was like a flashing lights. And after that, I got it right. So I'm practicing remote viewing, but in certain special circumstances, I get it right once in a while. But one of this was a couple of times where I has achieved it, have achieved it with a machine, which synchronizes you. And after that, like a few hours after that, you're still uh, spaced in a special place where you can remote view. And uh, oh, we have uh, other people. So yeah. uh, Eva, do you have, what, what's your experience with remote viewing? Are you driving at the same time? No, I'm, I'm riding. Well, oh. I'm not, I cannot claim much experience with remote viewing, so <laughs> I'm, okay. I'm just open. Thank you. And James? Sorry, I haven't tried it. I haven't tried it before, so this is something um, uh -huh. I'm to. Um, and Stephanie? Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, what's your experience with remote viewing or interest? You know, I do have an interest in it, and I think I've experienced it um, on a couple of occasions I, during meditation and lucid dreaming, and I was very aware of being in, in my body and moving through, uh, in one particular case, what seemed to be some kind of residence, um, and I was thinking, you know, consciously, well, here, move there, see there, just something in that moment told me I was remote. I don't know what? if that was accurate or not, it feels like it was. Nice. And Kieran, what's your experience with remote viewing? Well, um, for me, remote viewing, I've, I've been a sort of medium and, and psychic so for a long time, but I, I, I see remote viewing as sort of the layman's um, version of psychic uh, psychic phenomena it's a way to you know because it was done in a in a, it was always done in a sort of scientific setting and in with all the sort of without all the little frou-frou things that you have in the sort of the metaphysical world so it's a very it's a very uh, a very laid out um, disciplined practice that you do but what it in fact it does is it looks at the different clairvoyance it's, it's your clear audience your clear um, what well, you have your clear is your clear knowing, your clear um, hearing, your clear smell, your clear everything. So it's, it's involving all the senses and it's a way to tune in to locations or events, whether they're the past, present or future, and to get impressions of those events. So I, I do this pretty, I'm pretty good at it. I can't say that um, I always get it exactly, but I do very, um, very frequently, I would say more than not i'm able to perceive aspects of whatever it is that i'm remotely viewing with 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 some, let's, some good accuracy uh, let's, nice. so let's uh define what's the difference between the ideas of channeling and remote viewing well in fact it, it's a remote viewing is 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 just a term so let's but what it is is it's viewing it's allowing the perceiver to describe a, a, a given target um, that's normally inaccessible without knowing anything about it. So you will describe a person, place, or thing. You will describe an event. You will describe a location. Um, you will describe you know, many different things, whether they're in the past or in the future or in the now. 
So it's very much looking at something very specifically. Um, the government did research on this for their Stargate project. They, they say they abandoned it. I don't know if that's true or not, but many uh, different, the Monroe Institute was very big with remote viewing work with the military. Um, so they would send people tar what they're called as targets and you they would focus on the targets and then they would write down their impressions of them. Um, so what's the difference between channeling? Channeling tends to be uh, more informational about a situation, the emotions that are involved in it. This needs tends to be, you get visual sensory, um, visual sensory kind of information about a location. You can channel, but it's not the same as channeling. Well, I will say though, it is a psychic sort of exercise and whatever you do that expands your ability to perceive and to trust. The biggest thing is trusting your instincts. And that's what the exercise we're going to really work on because that's where people fall down is you get impressions and then you say, then you start to second guess it and you say, oh, I, did I really think that? And and what I will teach you and what I propose to teach you is that your first instinct is right. And you may oh. not think it's anything, but that's what I want to teach you. And it's the same with mediumship and the same with um, remote view viewing or psychic work. It's it, That's all really the same. Channeling is a little different. Channeling is taking information from uh, your higher source or the universe and let, letting it come through you. Um, it's not the same. This is let, more let, like... Let me do my, uh, my simple answer. I would say in channeling, you get another, like in trans channel, you allow another entity to enter and yeah. there is a conversation in all direction. And in remote viewing, you remain in your mind and then you just look uh, beyond the physical. And it's one direction. You just look and without, usually without actually affecting the things on the other side. You don't, you usually don't speak, speak to the other side. You just look there without speaking. But there are exceptions, of course. Yeah. Well, what is astral traveling then? Well, astral traveling astral. is when you actually uh, have the sensation of leaving your body, at least in, on the spirit way. You're not leaving the fit. Your body is still breathing and, and doing, you know, body stuff. But your consciousness is actually is projected outwards. So that's a little bit different. Astral travel is a little bit different. But again, it's such a fine line that in the biggest sense, it's all sensory. It's all sensory perception. So astral, astral travel is a little bit different. Astral travel, you tend to go to many different realms and change dimensions. But in fact, this is sort of the same too. But this tends to be very, um, you want to go, they used, uh, people have done era a big one that is always ongoing is if you ever join a remote group viewing group, they're always, you know, remote viewing uh, Area 51, or they're going back to the Civil War, or they're looking at something, you know, they they look at specific events, they look at specific things, they uh, remote view the, uh, you know, 9/11. So it's it's used in that way, and it's about getting the sensation of what has happened and, and put it in. And astral projecting doesn't tend to be about those kind of things. It's usually astral projecting, you're going out into the heavens and the stars or you're, you know, visiting someone on the astral plane. This is very much perceiving stuff within the 3D world, though it could be expanded to that. So, but like I said, this is a very layman's, layman's and, um, term. What's a oh, just a second. It's just a very layman's description of psychic things. So they don't tend to be looking for the fantastical things. You know, this was done by the military. You can imagine the military wanted to see what our enemy's uh, <laughs> bomb, bomb arsenal looked like. That's the kind of information they were interested in. They were interested in seeing what kind of information they could get that they could use in some way. But the starting point is truly the same. and. It, it's, it's truly the same. Sorry, Max, go ahead. Max? Oh, we lost Max. Is there a way to protect against um, somebody invading your privacy and remote viewing? Since yes. Well, yes and no. Um, it, it really depends because this is all on a soul level. So, like, I, I had a friend yesterday, and I was telling her I was going to do this class, and he said, well, can you see me right now? That was his question. 
And I said, well, no, I don't think I can because you don't want to be seen. So that's really down to you as, as the viewer to, you know, ask the universe to give you and, and ask the, the, if it's a person now that you're viewing, ask that you are seeing them in a moment of time that is not going to be embarrassing for them or, you know, no one wants anybody sneaking in, you know, <laughs> whether they're in the bathroom or anything like that. But that's the sort of ethical uh, responsibility. I doubt very seriously, again, on the government situation when they were doing remote viewing of military stuff that they asked anybody's permission because their goal is a lot different than, say, our goal. So it's always good to um, be aware of what of what you're doing and and why you're doing it but i think for at least today we're not gonna we're not gonna show up in anybody's um <laughs> private places wow. today huh right i i i uh, i realized when i'm doing reiki that if i use remote view and i can actually remote view inside the body right and mm. do diagnosis this way and it's kind of a little gross but you get used to that <laughs> yeah, yeah maybe you and it has to do with what you're viewing some things people don't really care but other things people might be private about and and you have to sort of ask their uh you have to ask their at least on the astral you have to ask them spiritually you know is it okay if i if i view you but for, for this exercise and, and for what we're going to do today um and just again to open because it's a process and it's like a muscle the more you use it the better you are, the more you practice, the better you get. And you start to, what the biggest uh, thing to overcome is the trust, the trust in the information. Um, with, in mediumship, what they, what they teach you is that when you sit down for a reading, to give someone a reading, everything that happens from the moment you say, okay, I'm here, hello, I'm starting the reading. As soon as you start the reading, everything that happens is part of what, the reading is so if you, whatever your senses start to pick up whatever you if your eyes suddenly move to a certain direction if you feel a sensation on your skin if you you know feel a uh, uh, twitch on your nose if you if you smell something or if you hear something that's part of the reading and it has a relevance and you have to start to trust that and not question it and just brush it off of oh that's nothing and the other thing that you should remember is that you do not try to figure out exactly what it is that you're communicating. It's about, you know, at the end, it, cumulatively, you will start to get an opinion like, oh, this is the way it is. But generally in a mediumship reading and also in remote viewing, you'll get a little bit of confirmation. And then from the confirmation, you can move forward. So really in the beginning, it's about trusting the sensation and allowing yourself to be honest of, of every little thing you sense. So if we're going to view an object, you know, you, you're going to look at, for, I want everyone to, for, just for this moment, to think of an apple, a red, it has to be a red apple, a red apple. And I want you to think about it and hold that idea. You can close your eyes if you want. And just close your eyes and hold the idea of a red apple in your mind. And, and keep your eyes closed until you really, really see it. And what you'll see is you'll see the curvature of the apple. You'll see the color variance of the red, some of it a little darker, some of it a little brighter. Maybe it's a little bit shiny. The smell of the apple will start to come into your nose. This is something we all remember. So you start to have this idea of this apple. Maybe you see the stem of the apple. Do you see the whole apple or do you just see parts of it? So when we start to look at an object, which in remote viewing is called a target, what you would draw on your paper, and everyone should have a pen and paper, is you would just draw the circle of it or however you see it. And you would maybe instead of coloring it, you would write the color red with something. And you may not know it's an apple. But what's most important is you start to get the feel of all of the aspects of it. Maybe you smell something. Maybe you don't know what you're smelling, but you say it smells fruity or sweet or tart. It can also be a smell. So those are the kind of senses that we want to start awakening. 
And it's best to start with small things and then you move into other things. You know, is there a sound? Maybe there's a sound you associate with an apple. Maybe there's a taste that comes into your mind. Maybe there's a feeling that comes with it. So, and those are the things that people might say, why am I thinking of an apple? <laughs> you know, people like, oh my gosh. But, but all of those things are very important. All of them are very important and all of them make up what an apple is. An apple isn't just this, but it is, it's the curvature, it's the color, it's the smell, it's the feeling. You might think, how does this feel in my, if I were to touch it, how does it feel under my fingers? So remote viewing is about allowing yourself to sense things with your senses, with all of your senses, your smell, your touch, your, your hearing, your, uh, also your clear knowing of what it is, all of your senses so that you can describe it. So that's, that's actually what it is. That's actually what uh, remote viewing is, is. So how many people, just with a show of hands, were able to see the apple in their mind's eye? Christine, Eva, yeah. <clears throat> Stephanie, James, you were able yeah. to see it. Did you, did you have any taste sensation of it? Could you taste it? Wasn't it wasn't very good. It was like not ripe, not a ripe apple. <laughs> That's not a bad apple. Did you, did anyone taste it? <laughs> I I heard a crunch instead, but not the You taste. heard a crunch of it? Yeah. Yeah. Could you so taste it? I, or no. But you had the I mouth sensation of it. Um, You know how when you bite into a nice crisp red crunch. apple? That's yeah. what I did. Yeah. 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 Did you smell it? Can anyone smell it? Anyone yeah. smell? Oh yeah. You could smell it. Did you did you see yeah. the whole yeah. apple or just a part of the apple? The I saw half the head. apple. <laughs> the front. The front of it. <laughs> yeah. You know that game that's like the elephant game where they say the blind men were all stood in front of the elephant and they had different impressions of the elephant because they were all one could feel the trunk so they said oh it's it's a snake because they got that impression sometimes uh, doing psychic works a little bit like that it depends on what part of it you can see so you, <laughs> some of it sometimes you don't get exactly uh, the full information but just trust that what you're getting is, is relevant especially in the beginning and we're not for for now we're not trying to do any kind of you know uh high government works <laughs> nobody's <laughs> you mean looking for the worm in the apple did you look for it did you find one no okay, no good. but that's no what the government do. <laughs> well i don't know you know i think that the, you they said that they they abandoned the research uh in uh i, I don't 1975 or something but i have the feeling they may or may or may not have done that it depends on if yeah, they can have remote view things. if they are remote viewing, right? We don't you know, know we if are they are. No, we, are <laughs> we are absolutely sure they just uh, uh, changed it from a semi open academic to completely uh, secret. That's all. Possibly, yeah. And and now with technologies being so good, you know, you just send a drone in. <laughs> You're probably going to need to have somebody sitting and doing something. So. There was a funny story. They. When they developed that remote viewing, uh, they didn't allow officials to, to communicate with the viewers because no. the officials had a lot of secrecy and the viewers were civil people without the clearance. So if they right. met, they, the officials were afraid, were afraid that they will spill some yeah. of the secret to remote viewers. So yeah. they stood st like they, they never kind of sent the important people to meet the viewers. Right. So, so just, I think what we should do and, and if you remote viewing is 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 one of those things where um in the ideal situation you're sitting i just showed the picture i wanted to use the ideal situation you are um you are sitting in a quiet room with no disturbances um you are able to sit down and clear your mind and be very still and, and then you're quiet so this this is not not the most ideal situation because you're not quiet and you're not uh well you might be quiet but but there are disturbances and then there's of course me talking but i i think that we can still we can still do something so i want to find a nice picture oh, nice 
going to find a nice picture and uh, we'll see. This is a good one and, and see what we can, what we can do. Okay. Is everyone ready Hi. to try? All right. Yeah. So what you should do is if, if you're sitting still, put your feet down flat. Um, just relax your shoulders, get kind of clear your mind and then just close your eyes. Oh, do I need to get a pen for that? Oh no. It would help. Yeah. Because, because what we're going to ask you to do is you, you don't have to write down anything yet. First, we're just going to relax, just get a little bit clear. And then I lost um, my pen. Can you remove you where it is? <laughs> on the floor right. next to your foot. Okay. All right. So, no, it's not there. Okay. <laughs> All right. I, I give up. All right. I close my eyes. It's down on the up. side of the feet. Okay. Um, so anyway, so we're going to do that and we're going to relax. And then I'm just going to give a target and I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to give the target name. And you can just focus on this target. And when you open your eyes, I want you to just use your pen and paper to use any impression, to write down any impression, whether it's the name of a color whether it's a shape, maybe you draw a squiggle, maybe you draw a circle, it doesn't matter. And then just give a, just whatever flashes in your mind and, and write all of it down because maybe several different impressions will come. So just like I said, close your eyes. Take a deep breath in. And then blow out. Just let all the stress out of your body go. Take a deep breath in through your nose. Hold it. And just take a breath out. Just feel yourself relaxing, your mind clearing, not thinking about anything much in particular. Just you're excited about the idea of remote viewing. And then take another deep breath in and through your nose and hold it. And just maybe inform your guides that you're going to need their assistance, that you that you would like to be able to project your vision to wherever it is, this target is that I'm gonna list, and ask them to bring you as clear of a perception of that target as they can. And ask them to give you the confidence to just trust the information. Another deep breath in. Blow it out. So we're going to call this target 173. And I want you to focus on it. The number is 173. They don't have any actual meeting other than that it's my association with this, with this target and write down any color that comes to your mind you can open your eyes if you want and any shape is the thing curved or is it straight is there an atmosphere that you pick up is there a feeling a general feeling a mood associated with this Target. Is there movement or is it still? Is it large or is it small? When nothing else comes to mind, then you can raise your hand and say that you're done.
You done, Stephanie? Yes, that's good. Okay. Is everyone done? I think. Max, are you done? I am. Okay. All right. So, Stephanie, why don't you go first? And, and I'm not going to tell you what it is yet, but I, I want you to just describe what you, what you uh, felt. And, and, and these, and, and what we will say is that um, uh, when, you, when you get something that's correct, and we're not looking for the exact answer at this moment, this is the first time. So we call them hits, yeah? It's positive hits. So I'll tell you how many hits you have based on what you said. Who goes go first? Stephanie. All right. He's first in the line of the row that I see, so <laughs> but I'm not picking on you. Oh, that's okay. 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 I got um, light. There's light-ish, light-ish, and in, in color in some way. Mm -hmm. um, that it was roundish. That it was still. Mm -hmm. I can't make up my writing. Else. But then I, um, I written pear and uh, eye of Horus. Eye of Horus? Uh-huh. Okay, and, and you think that it's, you're saying the whole thing is an Eye of Horus? Um, I, I don't know. I don't know. I just, I think this, the, the fact Did you that draw was, any shapes that went along with it? No, I didn't. Okay. I would encourage you to down. draw any shapes that you see associated with it. Okay. Yeah? Okay. Um, why don't you go, Christine? I saw something circular. Okay. Um, and then after that, I just kept seeing this. <laughs> what so, is that? I can't see what that is. It's an obsidian crystal ball. Okay. It's a gray, um, it's got a gray, it looks like um, the solar system in here. Okay, so you just saw the crystal ball over and over again. That's all I saw. Okay, okay. But we're definitely Sorry. roundness, yeah. Yes. Did you, where did you perceive the roundness? Was it high? Was it low? Was it everywhere? This is what I want you to. Was the roundness here? Was it there? Was it over here? here? Was it here? 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 <laughs> Back here. No, I just pictured circular. Okay. And as soon as I pictured the circle, mm -hmm. I, I just couldn't get this crystal ball out of my mind. Okay, I, I will say for everyone, what, what might be, and I didn't say this before, is what might be good to do is on your paper, you want to draw a square. You can't see, yeah, here. Maybe. Oh, a square? I did a circle. And then okay. draw, and, no, 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 draw a square because within okay. this is your, what you're viewing. You want to draw this within your viewing. So, for oh. instance, do you see a circle here? Do you see it here, 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 and here? Do you know what I mean? So this is the yeah. first one, so that's okay. So Eva, what did you see? Eva, are you there? Yeah, Eva. Can you mute, uh, uh, Christine? Yes, you're good. You're oh, good. sorry. Eva, what did you see? Um, I started from seeing basically the apple, which turned into yeah. a pear, a, a pear, okay. yellow, yellowish greenish pear. Yeah. Then while you were talking, I was seeing different things, which like was changing with each word of yours. And then the last like clear images I was seeing was gray clouds, mm -hmm. which were moving. And then I kind of looked down and there was a ship. It's like okay. a ship. Okay. Now, when Stephanie said that Horace eye, it was like that shape, but it was clearly a ship. Okay. Thank you. Okay. And James? Well, mine was quite vivid, but um, I think I saw it was more like a safari park in Africa. Okay. Uh, with a couple of trees and kind of yellowy brown grass. Okay. Uh, I don't know if that's completely wrong. <laughs> okay. Um, did you perceive the color or did you perceive the grass? I perceived the sort of yellowy browns, kind of dry landscape. Okay. Um, and that, that was, that's it. Oh, um, I think well, there were some gray clouds. That, okay. Uh, that's about okay. it. Max. 
Yeah, I had a, an elephant and Pinocchio, and uh, it was a pretty much moving, and all other questions, they kind of just uh, were dominated by that idea of elephant. Elephant, okay. All right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, you guys, did you perceive any colors or? It was all dominated by, by the elephant, you know, whatever color elephant was. Okay, all right. Do you guys want to see what it is? Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, can, 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 no, no, uh, uh, we cannot see you because you disappeared. Can you click on you on yourself? Or, oh, uh, sorry, because you because right. whoever speaks, whoever speaks, the, their screen okay. is taken away. Right. It's Ganesha. Now, what I what's interesting to me is that you can see here a very pear shaped body, and there's a, so much yellow in this thing, but it's definitely elephant god, right? So right. I would say, and then there's can, can the you bring it closer here. to the screen? Closer to the screen to the camera. Yep. Mm -hmm. So uh -huh. here's the circle at the top, and I would say that there's a pear. He's a very pear-shaped guy, my Ganesha. He's a kind of pear-shaped uh, thing. But this is all yellow, and and I think, I think that um, Christine talked about, or Stephanie talked about shiny. So you know, and then also circular. His eyes are black balls. So that's what Christine was talking about. So one of the things I would say is that, um, James, I don't know where your safari was, but you might find an elephant on a safari. So you might have picked up, you might have picked up what Max was saying, you know, because sometimes when you're in a group, you also trigger off of each other. So I've been I've been done mediumship readings where you're sitting next to a medium and you start to read her and not the person in front of you. So sometimes you might have been reading Max and thinking elephant. He's thinking elephant. You're thinking oh safari. Do you know what I mean? It, it goes like that. So let's try one more. But um, what I would say to do is is to take your piece of paper and I would start with you know either fold your paper or, or turn a page. But I would make here uh, like a square like this I would make a square you know and within this square is what you're looking at and pay attention to if you see a shape where is it in this visual field you know if it's circular because it would have been interesting Christine if, if you know, she saw a pair do you know what I mean if, 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 if there was a pair here and a circle here, that's very much the shape of what this was. So that's what I want you to start to perceive. Even if you see, maybe you saw a squiggle here. Well, he has this long trunk here. And that's what I want you to, to start to write down. So if you see, maybe you saw something that was like, like this, but you didn't know why, but it, within your visual field, well, he's got two curtains that are going like this. So again, it's, it's about anything that pops in your brain, write it down, but think about where is the location of it and get a color. You might not have seen the curtains, but you might have had the feeling of velvet. Do, do you know what I mean? Or you might have thought there's velvet there. I don't know why I'm getting velvet, but I'm getting velvet. So that's the, the thing. So let me, let me find another, let me find maybe a simpler one. I just, I love Ganesha, so... I would always start with Ganesha if I can. Don't, I hope you can't see. Oh, this is a hard one. But maybe something simple. Find simple. I'm looking at a photography uh, book. So, oh, wow. They don't just do simple photography. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Okay, I saw another elephant. I thought, no, I'm not going to do that to you twice. Mm, ah, okay, <laughs> this is a strange one, but this will be about trust. Okay, I'm ready. You ready? Everyone's ready? Okay, so we're going to close your eyes again, clear your mind, and get back into the state you were in. Just relaxing, take a deep breath in, take a deep breath it out. And I want you to focus on a target, and this target is is E E T. E E T. 
Think E-E-T. And what I want you to do in your mind is I want you to, now I'm in the Netherlands, I'm in The Hague. I want you to zoom your perception out of your body, cross the globe to wherever you believe the Netherlands and The Hague is. And I'm waving to you. <laughs> and you're going to come down through my ceiling and you're going to look at this magazine that's in front of me. And you're going to look on this page and you're going to see it. Now, what I would say to you while you're listening to me is see yourself being here, maybe looking over my shoulder or standing next to me so that you can actually get a good view and that you're not having to see through a long, long, long telescope. And perceive E-E-T. What is it? What color is it? What shapes are associated with it? Where are those shapes in reference to the, the frame of your picture? Is it movement or is it still? The colors that are involved. That's my dog giving you encouragement. Smells of it. The weight of it, how does it feel? If you were to touch it, is it heavy? Is it hard? Is it soft? So once you, once you uh, are focused in it, take your time, write some things down, your first impressions, whatever they are. And they may not seem like they have anything to do with each other. But that's, like we said before, everything that happens when you do your focus has something to do with what you're seeing. Try to stay focused on EET. Don't read. James, don't read Max. Stephanie, don't read Eva. Don't read me. EET. Sitting on the table in front of me. My dog in the background making grunting noises because she wants some more food. I'll give you just one more minute. Go ahead and write whatever you can down. Is that a cat in front of you, Christine? <laughs> okay. Ask your cat to help you on the astral. She likes to be here when I'm doing things like this. Yeah, they love the energy. Yeah. Okay. All right, so we'll start with Christine this time since she's on the other end. We'll give Stephanie a break. <laughs> <laughs> okay. EET. -E um, you know, the first thing I pictured was, you know how in mosques, um, mm -hmm. They used to have all that um, beautiful painting and wood carving and everything. Mm -hmm. That's what I was picturing. So you're picturing carving carved wood? No, it's the the painting of the mosques, oh, the um, in, of their, the mosques. Uh, in their tiles. Okay. All right. Did you get any feeling of shape or? It was like over a door. I was looking at the top of the built the top of the room and the top of the room has that tile and all that stuff okay and no smells sounds feelings emotions nothing no okay okay Eva what did you get I started uh, seeing trees mm -hmm. and uh, there was a meadow with flowers which turned into beautiful daisies and then for some reason there was this bright orange color like really really bright orange which my brain started in interpreting as a rope on a monk and then it was Tibet but I think this part was just associations okay. so that's okay. all I saw okay 
All right. James. I I got the colour red and okay. I'm sure I saw a flag. Okay. Being waved. Okay. Um and some flowers as well. Um but that's about it. Okay. Max. Hey, Max. <laughs> Max. Did you get anything? Okay, he didn't get anything. He's on mute right now, so we yeah, can't. he just muted. His picture was there, but then he's gone. Stephanie, what did you? Uh, I've been focused uh, on you this whole time. <laughs> Go ahead. So I got an image of one of those uh, thatched huts that you see in the vac vacation brochures yeah. that are in the extension out on the water. Mm. Okay. Blue. Got that little pier that you know you go out to your thatch hut. That's what I got. So, okay, Max, <laughs> did you get anything? No. What I will say to you is, I I think I think you have to. I I want to hear more about shapes. I want to hear more about color. I want to hear more about uh, impressions of texture. And, and that's, I, you're giving me what your impression is that you think it is. I don't want to hear what you think it is. I want to know what you're perceiving because you're guessing now. You're trying to make whatever sensations you have fit whatever it is you think you know. And that's what we have to let go of. You guys, there was nobody that was really on. Um, I really no blue, have. No huh? What? No blue, no browns. Well, there's browns. Did you get browns? Yeah, well, from the thatched uh, kind of roof, um, the yeah. twig. Did you, get it? did you draw it? Did I did. Draw? Can I see? Yeah. Oh, well. Uh, hold it. Yeah, hold it in front of your camera. Oh, she went away. Where is she? There you go. Oh, oh yeah. can you see that? See. Yeah, pull back. Okay, I see what you're saying. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well... <laughs> It's, I'll tell you what, it, it has nothing to do with anything. Can you see this is bread with a knife going <laughs> through the top of it? Oh, boy. <laughs> there funny. is a little red flag here, but it's not waving. Okay. That's all right. So, okay, let's do something more simple. Let me see if I can find something very simple now to uh, do because uh, maybe those are too hard. But I don't think it should matter because it, it's about trusting the, the sh again, trusting the, uh, the impressions you get. So try, try to write down, I want everyone to make at least one, write down one shape or some kind of feeling, is it a squiggle, is it a line, is it a triangle? Maybe it's two triangles going like this. Maybe it's just, you know, I want a color, and I want um, feeling for the texture. Let me see. Here. Ooh. Are we on your target? No. Did you? What did you get, uh, Max? Yeah. Um, it was uh, the shape was a kind of a, a cup with a uh, big spike in the middle. Yeah. And then. Um, First choice was Kennedy, JFK. Second choice was a cobra, and cobra kind of dominated that. Okay, I don't so want you to. I don't want you to. Uh, well, what you did get, and it's, I want to show you. See, you. This is what I told you. I don't want you guys to do. I do not want you to guess what you think it is. I. I don't want you to define it because when you define it, you get locked into what your idea is about that, and then you start to only see that. But what you. Right. What you did get correct was the Hold spike on. in the middle of it. And you and the, you the final it? was a, a, a Eiffel Tower, Mon a Washington Monument, and uh, Again, some kind of monument on the plot. 100%, I don't, nope. want, I don't want to hear anything about what you think it is. But what, okay, you, okay. but what you did get is this spike in the middle, and you got a, a shape here, a spike going right down through it. 
This is a knife going uh -huh. through a bunch of bread. But what was it? What did, I don't understand what it is. It's bread. Can you see this? Ah, I see. Do you see uh -huh. now? Do you see what I'm saying? You got yep, the spike yep, going yep. down, but that's a knife. Yep. yep. So I don't want to hear it's the Eiffel Tower. I don't want to hear. I think it's this because uh -huh. when, I'm not interested in exact. What I'm interested in is perceiving the shape. Uh huh. Perceiving, you know. Um, direction that something's moving you know going like you said going right down the center of it i want to know the colors it's associated with if you had said to me i have a cylinder with a spike going through it and there's a lot of brown i would say that's a very accurate thing so what you and, and the reason that the reason i keep saying i don't want to hear all that stuff is because this is about not um judging what you're seeing the moment you start to judge what you're seeing, you are projecting yourself into what you think it should be. Because this is, mm -hmm. in a way I want to say, it's not about being right. It's about Thank you. true mm -hmm. perception. It's about understanding and about letting the information come through, uh, through you and get past your filter. In channeling, that's also a big thing. You know, a lot of times you you can't get out of your own way. Well, especially this in in mediumship, which is what this is. This is it's never about you or what you think. It's like you're the telephone, and the telephone has no opinion about what the information is that comes through. It just comes through, and you've got to be that telephone, and you've got to let whatever sensation, whatever color, whatever shape, whether sound, whatever feeling whatever touch feeling what whatever it is come through and you don't really need to define it exactly because that comes later but in the beginning it's really about letting all these things come through okay i'm going to find something else for us to focus on we'll do one more we have time to do one more we'll find a really nice one <laughs> okay. All right. I've got one. <laughs> this is a good one. Okay. So everyone close your eyes again. Again, make sure you have your frame there. And I want you to perceive well, as you start to look at, we're going to call this one the SCL target, SCL. And We're going to perceive the SCL target within the frame of our paper. And I want to understand what shapes do you feel? What colors do you feel? Is there movement within it? Is it still? Does it fill up the frame or is it very small? Does it have an emotion? Or does it have a feeling that goes with it? Is it trying to convey an idea or is it just something that is? What type of activities happen around it? Is it part of something else? Give you one more minute and then start to write everything down if you haven't and and again any shapes any any mostly shapes i want to see on the paper because i want you to be able to draw it no perception of what it is no defining it i'm just looking mostly for the outline of it Is this something you've seen before or have never seen before? You can also have that question. Do you know this or do you not know it? Okay. 
you one more minute. Okay, hopefully you're done. Let's start in the middle this time. <laughs> James. Um, I'm a little bit stuck. I didn't really get anything really. Nothing? Um, well, like it's, um, I was going to say like a velvety texture of something, okay. um, of a cloth type thing um but that's that's only that's the the only thing that came came to mind okay did you get a color associated with this velvet texture maybe like a dark purpley type color but okay that i'm not um confident in okay. saying that. It's not about, but just whatever the impression is so if you start to if you for instance if you if you see a, like a texture of a of like a fabric like velvet or whatever then, then your question you should say in your mind is, what color is that? Where is it in the picture? Is it, yeah. you know what I mean? So you can start to move through the checklist. And what, you, what you're what you saying to yourself is, let me look at that a little closer. Let me look at it a little closer. And it doesn't matter so much if you actually see it or you just sort of perceive it or get a feeling about it. That's that's all everyone's individual um, clear perception you know maybe you're clear audience maybe you're you're clear um cognizant maybe you're clairvoyant that has everything to do with that that's not so much important but do you if you think about it now does that velvet have a you said it's a dark color yes yeah, like a dark purpley so of. would you would you where would you say that is in the in the picture of what you're seeing Front and center, to the side, in the back. Oh, yeah. the, I suppose in the middle. Okay. Yeah, towards the middle. All right. And I can, I can, and I thought I knew that this kind of texture. Mm -hmm. I mean, the actual way it felt, but I can't. I'm not sure. Okay. Anything That's else about it? Any shapes associated with it, or with anything around it? Um, triangleish. Triangleish. Yeah. What what's triangles? Like near it, uh, above it? But uh, the basic shape. Is it like a drape? Like a draping. I'm not, I'm not gonna tell you what it is yet. Oh sorry. <laughs> Maybe a draping sheet. Okay. Um, but there again, that could be me second guessing. Yeah. Um, okay. That's that, the only thing we've got. That's the only thing. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Max. We can't hear you at all. <laughs> the first feeling was very strong feeling that it is a feminine thing, like uh, something feminine. Okay. And uh, it's like had a red color with white circles on it, and it was roundish, fat, okay. and uh, something around like a shape and a feeling of a red beanie bag. Red beanie bag. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's about it. Okay. And the red's the only color you perceived? Red and white, yep. Red and white, okay. And and the beanie bag shape? Yeah. Okay. okay. That's it? Maybe pizza. I don't pizza. know. <laughs> okay. <Maybe> you're hungry. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, Eva, what did you get? I was trying my best not to see any images. Um, but well, if you see them, that's fine. But what I did, didn't want you to do is to give Max like, well, I think it's either the Eiffel Tower or whatever, unless you're very sure it's the Eiffel Tower. Do you know what I mean? Well, so, before I was actually seeing like an exact image, but that happened okay. so. What did you see? Time I was trying to kind of avoid the exact images, but I was I saw kind of a triangle shape, like a little open on the top. Yeah, which was kind of really dark, but mm -hmm. then also there was um, on the um, upper right to my view, 
mm -hmm. it was like a, a very bright uh, circle, light bright circle. Okay. Was another like image which I saw separately from the first one. Okay. So that's about it. Okay. And any other shapes or colors or? No, or just, just very dry, dark image. Felt like a person, but maybe not. I okay. don't know. All right. Okay. Um, who's next? We'll go with Christine. I'm sorry, but I saw a banana split. <laughs> Triangular. I think it's time for lunch or dinner or something. You saw banana Red split? Red Yeah, okay. Round scoops of... Uh, <laughs> okay, I can tell you it's not a banana split, but I'll just leave it there. I can't even think of the last time I've seen a banana split. Okay, <laughs> anything else that you saw? <laughs> okay, Stephanie. So I saw the only colors I saw, and I'm going to hold this up too because I drew some. Sure. Um, the only colors I saw was like black and I guess it's reverse here, black and white. Uh huh. No, it's not reverse. Yeah. Oh, okay. So it's like tubular. Um, the tube was like black, shiny black lacquer, and the white, the little cash things there were yeah. white. And I, they appeared like white thread. Okay. Um, and I think that was it. What else was on there? Wood. Yeah. It was unfamiliar to me. Okay. Um, so that's what I got. Okay. Um, I think I think James and Ava got the closest things, and and for two reasons, you're gonna laugh when I tell you. And also, you picked up something, Chris, um, uh, Stephanie, too, that I would say I would associate with it, Max. What did you say? You said pizza? It's not, <laughs> not pizza. <laughs> it's definitely not feminine. And I think that the thing is that it's, it's so not feminine, it's masculine. Ah. <laughs> so I'll show you what it is. It's Arnold Schwarzenegger on the cover of Muscle and Fitness magazine. And you talked about the velvety dark thing. I would say that this here is a, is a, is a triangular shape here. Now, Eva got a person. And it's very dark, you know, that's like amazing. And I got the yellow, except I got the yellow when the yellow is, except I was seeing right around. So, so what but I really want to say, you very bright. what you didn't do, and this is what I want you to do for the next time, is if you see yellow here, write yellow there. Now, what, what, what Stephanie saw was this tubular thing. And if you look here along the bottom is a black tube with white in it. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So this is a little bit hard. Max perceived black and white. Some people got red. Um, I don't see any uh, cherries or beanie seats, but <laughs> but it's a very – so so do you see what I'm saying? So if you saw the triangle in the middle – a big yeah. black triangle. It's not purple. I will say that. But if I look at it, if I really look at this black top he has on, I would say it has, it's like a bluish black. It's a dark black that he has on. Um, this is the, uh, I work for Muscle and Fitness Magazine. So, but, so you're seeing the yellow, you perceive it. It's not, this isn't an easy one, but the fact that you got a person is big, is a good thing. Um, the reds, now, I will say that within this um, background, it's white with like squiggles. It's actually a brick background, but the squiggles are sort of black, the, the, the grouting. So this is a, it's a hard one because there's a lot of different things. But the fact that you got a person and then this big black center, I think that's important. And then this yellow is a good hit. And then this also is a good hit here because this is very small detail. So when, when they did remote viewing, what they would do is because you, it's important to work within your shape. So what, what we would have wanted to know from, from um, Stephanie is where did you see that, that black tubular thing, you know? 
And but that's something that will come. So if you were to really focus on the black tubular thing, maybe you would see it start to see it in the right direction. If 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 James is seeing the triangle, black triangle in the middle, then and 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 we we've got Eva saying, I really believe it's a person, we would have then there would be a a, a bringing together of that information, you start to piece it together. It, it's very much like the person, there goes my mouse. It's very much like the elephant being perceived by different people. And and what to, once you start to feel comfortable, and, and we're spending just a very little time um, with this, but as we would start to get it and start to have agreements, you know, maybe I would try to see, can I see that black triangle? And then I might say, well, I see it me maybe being more of a, of a, you know, the torso of a person. The, you know what I mean? And you start to bring together that, that image. And that's how remote viewing has worked in, in, in the past. So, yeah. So, so this, is, this is a hard one. But this one actually had the most cumulative hits than all the other ones, you know. And I think it is. Imp I think it's important to know that James sort of probably read uh, Max, and that's why he was picking up the safari. Because where else do you see a safari? An elephant is it on a safari? So, yeah. And Eva, you also got some other ones. I, I forget what you got. That was also very close. So, and Stephanie, you picked up some stuff too. And Christine, yeah. I don't know. Maybe Arnold is secretly thinking in the photo that he would love to have a banana split. <laughs> You never know, you know. If I see you, I'm going to say to him, what were you thinking about when you were? Or if maybe you'll see an interview on TV where Arnold goes, you know, I've done a lot of photos. And when, I, when I'm posing for my photos, I'm really thinking about food. <laughs> Let me see what it says on here, just to make sure there's nothing. It's in Dutch, but I want to make sure it doesn't say banana split on here or anything. Well, let me see something. There's a there's a thing that's called three. It says three protein rich uh, recipes for a barbecue. No, there's no banana split. Unfortunately, let me see. I want to see if this is true. Wouldn't that be funny? How about in the group? Anybody thinking of a banana split? <laughs> Someone near you. You know what's funny too is when I would do readings for people, and I and I used to do, and I still do that. Once a year, I do this big festival, and I read like three hundred people over three days, and they just boom, 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 and just like little quick readings. And a lot of times, sometimes you'll pick up the information that's really for the person, maybe that person who's after you, or maybe two or three people down the line, because the information is floating. So I'm not seeing that. I'll have to look later. We've come to the end of the hour. But it would be interesting to know if there's any banana splits or any kind of ice cream going on in here in this magazine. Maybe she just looked past the ad and went right into the magazine. I don't know. There's some yogurt, but I'm, it doesn't constitute a banana split. I might be reaching too far. So anyway, so <laughs> does anyone have any comments or anything that did, do you perceive things a little differently than you have? Does it give you a good way to look at stuff? Give you something to think about when you're perceiving? Has have you have you thought about stuff like this, or does it, do you have a little bit more of an idea of what your impressions mean versus how you used to? If you concentrate on something, are you is it any different than what you've experienced before? I just want to say that it was very helpful the way you led us to actually seeing things. Yeah. Because I seem to have a tendency to see um, the, my own colorful images in my head because I am an artist. So, okay. but you were like leading me to, through the layers of my own uh, mind to actually see. That's why I think that with the last one, I saw the shape, triangle shape, dark, you know, which I thought I was, I'm seeing a person. Yeah. Which before I couldn't do that because again, I was seeing like pop-up images and they, they were pretty much my, you know, 
my creativity. Mm -hmm. Well, I would just say this, that, you know, in the best possible setting for, for something like this, you're quiet. It's not rushed. You know, you're not trained to see it in two minutes. So it's, you, you're taking it around, you know, you're taking your time to perceive everything. This is sort of a very quick drive by just for the sake of time. But at the same time, it's, you know, letting the information come in and again, not judging it, not trying to figure it out, but letting all of the perceptions that you have, you know, lead you to the place where you you're able to perceive. So I think the, the biggest thing I would say to everyone is just slow down. Whatever you perceive, what, whatever it is, a square, a circle, a triangle, a squiggle, uh, a color, a feeling, you know, however, if you, if you see something, ask yourself the question, can I, can I see it closer? Can I touch it? You know, in your mind's eye, touch it, feel it, squeeze it, push it, you know, try to lift it, get, Get, interact with that impression so that you get a better idea of what you're perceiving. And then again, the most important thing is for the sake of this, and even if you're trying to, you know, maybe you're getting ready to, maybe this is an exercise to take with you is that before you go wherever you're going to go um, today or, you know, somewhere, try to take two minutes and, and, and see what that place is you're going to. So if you know you're going to go to a restaurant or a store or to a friend's house or something, try to see what it looks like when you walk through the door. Picture yourself mentally walking through the door of wherever you're going, assuming you're going into a building. And get a perception of what you feel and see about it. Do you notice there's uh, a mail on a table? Do you notice that there's a specific picture on a wall? Is the carpet a certain color? Is there no carpet? Whatever it is, and, and, and write that down, but keep it in that mental frame and take a snapshot of just that first impression that you have and write it down before you go and maybe take it with you or, you know, Remember to check it when you get home, but just see how much of what you perceived was actually accurate. So that's a way to practice and project yourself out there and to, to get the feeling of things. So you can start to, you know, uh, have a feeling about where you're going. I used to, <laughs> I remember one time I was in college and we were going to go to a bar and I'd never been there. And I, and I, I actually went and I looked around all around the bar and I really got it. I had, there was a bear on the wall. There was all these things I got. I, I had like so many uh, things that I thought, wow, that's pretty, uh, you know, good. I mean, I don't know what that, you know, in the end got me other than I had the recognition when I walked in, but, um, and also to see yourself in the moment you walk in, don't try to just send yourself there, but, Project yourself into the future of the moment you're walking in so that the experience that you have in that moment walking in is actually the moment of walking in because the, everything is now. So there's that part of you that's walking in already. That's always that that's already happening. So just project yourself, your consciousness to that moment and see what you and see what you see. So whether you're going to the grocery store, take a quick look around, see what jumps out at you. And just write it down. Maybe it's the shapes. Maybe there's a special color or something that j jumps out to you. So anyway, I hope you will join us the next time. We'll do this again next week. Max, are you still there? No? <laughs> We're looking at Stephanie this whole time. I have a picture on her, but everyone can have hear my voice. So, yeah. Max, are you Thank there? Thank you, Kieran. Uh yeah, uh, I was. I just checked out and noticed several people couldn't get on on the right place. Oh, okay. Find us on hukola.org yes. and uh, click on jump page, and there there is a link. Today we use a new link, and next time it will be even a different new link, and it will be a paid webinar for low price. So, so check out the link and uh, follow the instructions. It would be a different one, but we are sitting now a new system where. Multiple teachers can give wonderful webinars. Uh, stay tuned. It's all on hukola.org and on hukola private group at uh, Facebook. 
join us in these two places. Okay. And just so you know, I'm available for private readings, channeling, and uh, I have a big event coming up on the 12th of August. Uh, myself, Sean Swanson, uh, who channels the Yael, as well as Vita Kukulhoff, who channels the Yael. We're doing an event in Amsterdam. So if you're anywhere near Amsterdam, uh, please go to my website, aboutoneness.com, and uh, you can come to the webinar excuse me, to the uh, channeling event. And then, Max, you have one week left to sign up for the big Hucolo event coming up at the beginning of August. You want to say something about that? Yeah, it's a workshop. Uh, you find it by going to hucolo.org and clicking on workshop. And we still have a few places left. And we already have 27 registrants, uh, participants. Awesome. So we are doing it for the first time, this kind of workshop with classes and teaching. And how many days and is Eva it? And Eva is coming, so Eva is... Say again? How many days is it? Uh, five days. Five days of nothing but channeling, Reiki, Yay! fun. <laughs> hey. Hey. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, it's like yeah, immersion into love. Yeah, five days of love. Five days of love. From Max <laughs> and Jim and everybody else that's going to be there. So that sounds amazing. So if you can, hukilo.org. Okay, well, that's it. Um, much um, everyone. For, oh. for your webinar, the, the one which is uh, for your event in Amsterdam, oh. yeah. I tried to Google it to find it. And just a search for Karen Newman and Sean Swanson didn't bring up that thing. So maybe you want a Facebook page where people can find you. I need, like it, it is on, there is a, a Facebook uh, event, but you can, I, I will make sure I put the SEO for, uh, for the event. That's a good idea on my website. So. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you for the. Thank you, the, Karen. Thanks very much. Thank you. I hope you enjoy the class and. Uh, and tomorrow, tomorrow, Karen, um, you're doing the channeling tomorrow. Right? Yes, I'm channeling tomorrow. Yeah, Karen is channeling on Saturday webinar tomorrow. Yes. I'm going to go get a banana split. <laughs> All right, here we go. Enjoy it. Enjoy that being in school. I will. <laughs> That's awesome. Enjoy your day, everyone. Thank you. Enjoy your day. Yeah, you too. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.